I use time as my dependent variable. I study time every day. I know that time itself is infinite in the past. And I was in the search for what am I doing to limit myself because of my past? And what I found out was the meaning of my past, the light, the love, and the lessons that I found in my past were the only limitations of the infinite past that I had. And then I looked and said, what am I limiting myself for the future. And I realized through intensive study that the only thing that limited my future was not only the meaning of the past, but the self-image that it created for me. In this episode, I'm thrilled to be joined by the incredible David Meltzer, David's an esteemed best-selling author, consultant, business coach, and the co-founder of Sports One Marketing, recognized as a luminary in the realms of investing and empowerment. In our conversation, David opens up about his journey, offering a glimpse into how his past experiences have influenced his outlook on the boundless potential of time and self-image. We dive deep into concepts like limitations, abundance, and the pivotal role our past plays in shaping the trajectory of our futures. We challenge established norms by exploring the transformative power of gratitude and giving, while David introduces a game-changing perspective on the relationship between giving and receiving. He advocates for a paradigm shift, suggesting that seeking help should be seen as a form of giving, fostering not just personal growth, but also exponential abundance in our lives. Shifting gears, we delve into practical advice for business growth. David emphasizes the pivotal strategy of nurturing individuals to drive business expansion. He outlines a comprehensive three-step process for effective leadership, meeting people where they are, engaging in collaborative efforts, and ultimately empowering others for success. Join us in this enlightening discussion packed with insights that will reshape your approach to both life and business. It's an opportunity not to be missed. Enjoy. Welcome, everybody, to another uh, another you know episode of the Hero of the Hour podcast. I'm Mark Murphy, the founder and CEO of uh, Northeast Private Client Group and uh, the author of my third book, the uh, best-selling book, The Ultimate Investment. But I'm here today with a with a very good friend, a very special guest, and uh, and uh, Somebody that uh, I, I consider a, a, a dear friend, uh, David Meltzer. So welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. And just uh, always love to pour into communities about investing, uh, not just in investing in monetary things, but uh, making the investments in what's relative or important to us. You know, David, I want to give you a, a compliment before we start. I uh, just want to tell you how you've inspired me uh, in, in just a few short years that we've known each other is what I always knew is that I was always at my best when I was serving others. And I always knew that uh, I wanted to make a difference in the lives of all the people I've touched. But I think having worked and done some work together with you, it's allowed me to think even bigger and more global and that I would have the ability to impact positively even more people. And, uh, you know, I think that that's, uh, you know, that, and I learned that from you. Uh, Love to hear. Love to hear uh, how how you got that mindset. Well, the first thing I thought of is limitations in an infinite world, and I use time as my dependent variable. I study time every day. Uh, I know that time itself is infinite in the past, and I was in the search for what am I doing to limit myself because of my past. And what I found out was the meaning of my past the light, the love, and the lessons that I found in my past were the only limitations of the infinite past that I had. And then I looked and said, what am I limiting myself for the future? And I realized through intensive study that the only thing that limited my future was not only the meaning of the past, but the self-image that it created for me. And that if I truly believed in the infinite, which I do, the abundant, more than enough of everything, and I've lived uh, in that realm as much as I can, that it is my self-image that limits not only my future, but the meaning that I give my future. And so I set forth not just for myself, but to empower others, to empower others 
with this infinite, abundant, unified system of thought that allows us to make a lot of money, to help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. And I will say that when on my mission of empowering over a billion people to do this, I rarely come across someone like you. And let me tell you what I mean by that. A lot of people, when they hear my mission and they listen to the life lessons uh, that I've learned, they talk the talk. I get it. I understand. Yeah, I'll do it. And I see absolutely nothing. Zero. The zero effect. And every once in a while, I run into someone like a Mark Murphy. And very humbly, oh, I like that. That You know, Dave, I resonate with what you're teaching me and what you're saying. I would like to be a part of that. Is there anything I can do to help you? Every time I sit down with Mark Murphy, what? Tell me a little bit more about what you're doing, Dave. Would it help you if? Would it help you if? But here's the differentiator of Mark Murphy compared to Dave Meltzer's people that he runs is that it's unbelievable that you take such a, you walk the walk. You keep delivering more and more value in a humble manner that creates more and more value for both of us. Uh, and that it is an amazing, I think, capability that some people, they talk the talk. And there's very few that live in what I call the empty mile that walk the walk. And Mark, why I pay attention and give such intention to anyone and anything that you say or, or, or introduce me to is because there's very few people on earth that actually that give the walk, the intention to what they say. Well, that, that, is, that is so kind of you. I, you know, I think, I think that, you know, that the mo motivation is one thing. I think you know, motivation is, you know, was like last for about an hour sometimes, or, you know, about the, the you know, if, if that long, but I think that some people can have discipline. You need to have discipline. You need to have focus. But I think that the other thing is, is that after doing this for 39 years, uh, you have to fall in love with the mundane. You know, that you have to find the excitement and the joy in the people. And that so that every every interaction and conversation is an opportunity to serve somebody else. You're so smart. And what that is completely aligned with one of my mentors. There's a gentleman, his name's Bob Parsons. He is the founder of GoDaddy. He exited personally for over $4 billion. And he told me something that changed my life. And the first half of what he told me, I actually rolled my eyes when he told me because he said, David, you know, if you learn to love what you do, and I thought he was going to say, like every other guy, you'll never work a day in your life, but he did. He said, David, if you learn to love what you do and you do it consistently enough and you do it long enough, it will tell you all its secrets. And it's those secrets, David, are the cheat codes to life that make everything easy. When everyone else is struggling and in dis-ease, you'll be at ease in abundance in that infinite unified system of thought that you believe in. And that has changed my life. And so as you stated, you know, we have to learn to love the mundane. We need to learn to love what we do, whether or not other people find it mundane or we have to do a little bit of extra effort in order to love the mundane. You know, in, in case people are watching this, have been living under a rock for a few years and don't know some of the work that you've done, but why don't you just tell us a little bit about kind of where you started and where you are right now and, and even more importantly, tell us where you're going. I love that. Well, I always break it down into three worlds. I was born in the world of not enough, like a lot of people. I had a single mom, six kids. She worked two jobs, packed my dinner in a paper bag. And after she was a second grade teacher, she'd fill up turnstiles at convenience stores with greeting cards just so we could eat. She thought the way I'd make it out of the projects in Akron, Ohio was through academics. I wanted to make it through athletics. Uh, she was more correct than I was. As I learned, although I almost reached my potential by being an under average and underperforming college football player, uh, I learned academically that I was born with a higher skill set in academics than I was athletics. <laughs> and so uh, I started my career out of law school, not as an oil and gas litigator driven to make money to buy my mom a house, but in the internet. Even though most of the people around me and even people who I looked up to, like, for example, Justice Scalia, when I ran into him, when I was selling legal research online, presenting to the Supreme Court, he said, son, nobody will ever do research on a computer. You need books. So despite <laughs> what other people thought, 
I made a million dollars out of law school. I ended up branding myself. We exited for 3.4 billion to Thomson Reuters in 1995 when 3.5 billion was a significant exit. Uh, 99, I continued in Sand Hill Road, trying to raise money, learning to raise money, working with the biggest VCs in the world and ended up being CEO of Samsung's phone div division in 1999 as I was just turning 31 years old. And there I learned about what my skill sets truly were uh, because I soon uh, was CEO of the second largest manufacturer of phones and I wasn't capable of what was really needed to be done. I was capable of selling and promoting. Uh, and so I went into the greatest selling and promoting business, which was CEO of Lee Steinberg Sports and Entertainment, which is the most notable sports agency in the world. They made the movie Jerry Maguire about the firm. I met Warren Moon, the Hall of Fame quarterback who we represented. Uh, he uh, was inducted in the Hall of Fame in 2006. And by 2011, we started Sports One Marketing, a global sports marketing company. And then I met a gentleman named Gary Vaynerchuk. And not only was I in sports marketing, but I became in sports media and starting to build my personal brand. Six, it'll be seven Super Bowls next month. Seven Super Bowls ago, Gary V, uh, who I thought you know, when they, they got all excited in the Nike suite, they're like, oh my gosh, Gary V is here. I'm like, who does he play for? That's how little <laughs> I knew. <laughs> That's how little I knew. I'm more like you. You know, I, I, sports was knowing athletic directors and, and coaches and players, but no, uh, I learned over the last, it's going to be seven years, how to build a community uh, on social media beyond the in-person, on the phone and email stuff that you and I have used for years. Uh, and this opened my eyes to a unfathomable size, scope, and scale of 8 billion people in a total addressable community. And my main mission, Mark, is like you. You, you and I are building a community of people that want to help each other and know people that can help each other. And you know what happens is for a lifetime, we surround ourselves with people that buy from us and sell for us and vice versa. And it creates abundance. And, you know, I will bend over backwards any day of the week for Mark Murphy. He is top of my list because out of everyone, like I said, you just get it. I don't know where you learned it. I don't know how you learned it. But I meet very few people around the world that really live in value add, not zero sum. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Like, I just think it's common sense to, to think that two things as you get beyond you know neither of us are 31 years old anymore but you, you you get to a point where you could still have more energy than anybody half our age because it doesn't take a lot of energy to be yourself and the other thing too is when you talk about getting easier is if you pour i think what people don't understand it is if you're not transactional if you pour into people for not months or even years but decades you got an army of people that want to help you and 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 by the way the the, the gift in life is in the giving that's the 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 mitzvahs and the giving. So I I think it's a uh, it just it, it it's it's shocking to me. And you obviously you do a lot more coaching all over the world than I do. But the idea is, why do you think that message which seems had such such clarity, or people even when they leave a a program have clarity, but they can't adopt it? What do you what do you think the what do you what's what prevents them from doing it? I think it's two things. One, the simple things to do are unfortunately simple not to do. And I start with teaching that lesson to people because gratitude, everyone on earth, every, uh, I, I study applied mathematics, I study uh, theoretical physics, I, I, I have been around the world's thought leaders, billionaires, millionaires, entrepreneurs, celebrities, athletes, and entertainers. And every single one of them, no, and have studied every religious text, every single one of those things, every one of those authorities say, that gratitude is the most impactful thing in your life. Now, to say thank you before you go to bed and when you wake up will have the most impact of anything that you and I can teach anyone, but yet it takes 0.1 seconds and it's free, but yet people won't do it. And so I think the first lesson is, hey, the simple things to do are unfortunately simple not to do because of human nature and our need to understand outcomes. And it's a need that cannot be satiated by the human being or human nature because 
Human beings cannot understand or know outcomes when they present themselves. It takes time for us to understand and know how going bankrupt could be the best thing in your life or getting divorced could be the best thing in your life or not getting the client could be the best thing in your life. We have no capability of understanding or knowing outcomes. And so therefore, we need to have the faith that, look, the simple things to do are unfortunately simple not to do. If I do the simple things with the most impact, then it'll create good progress, guaranteed. We can't dis- understand the outcome. So one, I, I raise the awareness to people saying, hey, simple things like giving, let's remind ourselves and raise our awareness that giving is good and we can do well by doing good. Um, and then the second thing is I think we're missing one of the aspects of the idea of the more we give, the more we receive, because I think people run out of giving. And what, what I mean by that is that if you start by asking for help and you understand that when we ask for help, that it's a form of giving, giving and receiving are one, that we are providing value to a person by asking them for help, that they feel better. They, they get more out of it because they're giving. And the more you give, the more you receive. So I shift the paradigm, not only of the simple things, but I say, let's not start by giving. Let's start by asking for help and receiving. When we receive, we then give, then we receive more. So let's put it into a unit framework. If I ask for one thing first, instead of giving my one thing, if I ask for one thing, and then instead of just giving my one thing, I now have two things, I give my two things. Now I ask for two things, because I had, right? Because I gave away two things. Right, right, yeah. Now I I am able to give four things, (laughs) and then I give out eight things, And so if we can just re-engineer people's vision of saying, hey, in a value add world, when we ask for help, when we ask for a unit, we get two units and we give two units, we get four units and give four. And so instead of ending up our lives by dissipating and dissolving what we have by only giving away, we actually are confirming a value add world of, hey, it's okay. When we ask someone for help, we are actually in an act of giving. We are giving them an opportunity to feel good, to add value to their life, the same way when we give. And so this is the exponentiality of giving. Giving, receiving, and witnessing giving and receiving are actually a value add activity, not just giving. You know, it's it's funny. I'm you know, you know, as you know, I'm a big college basketball fan of, of other things, but I, it reminds me of like when your team is up in the last five minutes of a game, so they start fouling you. And they foul the worst foul shooter, and that guy or gal steps up to the line and knocks two down. And they foul four other people in the last five minutes, and they knock them all down. And just the reverse, they foul a guy who's an 85% free throw shooter, and they miss the shot. And the next four guys miss miss their shots, too. It's contagious. It is, ama- it is amazing the impact that one person can have in a room. Like, I, I think that that's, you know, I think that so many people – that you work with don't have the courage or the confidence or whatever to say, I can make a difference. And you just, and my, a small little thing that I can do can impact such a bigger, bigger platform. And I think that that's, uh, that is, that is, that, that, that is something I, I see you teach all the time. Yeah. And one of the things that is reconciled with your perspective as well, both with behavior and money, see energy and why I study the applied mathematics and theoretical physics sides of thing is I want to understand energy because money is energy, as you know, and so is behavior. Behavior includes emotions, our energy, energy and motion. And so energy has three characteristics and it's inherent within what you're discussing here. The first is, is that energy attracts more like energy. So if you're positive and, and energy, you're going to attract more people. And you can see that with the people and ideas that we surround ourselves with. They're elevated, they're different, and we're attracting more. Both of us are attracting more people that are like us with the like behaviors and the like energy that we have. But then it also aggregates on itself and it creates exponentiality of outcomes. So instead of one plus one plus one, it's one plus two plus four plus eight plus 16, we get so much farther. And then the greatest aspect 
is energy, if it aggregates and compounds, it also accelerates. So now we're growing faster in man-made linear time. And so what you will receive in 2024 will be far more double what you received from zero to 2023. Because everything you have aggregates, accelerates, and compounds exponentially. And the doubling effects creates unbelievable abundance and allows you to give away more and more to more and more people. You know, a lot of people were talking about office space and, uh, you know, a Manhattan office space uh, going to come up, have a comeuppance in 2024. Uh, when I think of office space, uh, why don't you tell people where your office is? Yeah, I'm blessed to have some of the best offices in the world. And so my first office is inside SoFi Stadium in the actual stadium. It's not in the NFL office building next to the stadium. It is literally in the stadium. I have a studio. I have an office. I have a conference room. I have a training center. Uh, and we are have full access to tour people around. So I invite everyone that comes to meet me to meet me at my office, very close to LAX, SoFi Stadium, a $5.5 billion office. I have 65,000 seats in my waiting room, so <laughs> I can handle whoever wants to come. Uh, and then we have a studio at the Wynn, in the lobby of the Wynn in Las Vegas, uh, right by the buffet. And so we do our podcast and TV shows out of the Wynn, which I'll be at this Wednesday. Uh, and we get there as well. And then I also have a normal TV and movie studio in Orange County. Uh, and then we're blessed uh, recently to share space in Hudson Yards, talk about New York, Manhattan, office space. Uh, Mr. Ross and uh, a few others have uh, been very gracious to us to provide us an opportunity. My oldest daughter, as you know, lives there now and has uh, a home in what is also in New York City. Now, we are talking to your friends at MSG, uh, and I'm hoping very soon to be able to announce a new studio at uh, MSG right there in the center of Manhattan. I'd say I... I I'll, I'll, I'll want to know about that because uh, I, I probably spend 100 nights a year at uh, Madison Square Garden, so uh, it's uh, we're opening we're opening Gainsbridge as well. So I, I know you spend a few days in Indy in Bloomington, like I do. We have a couple homes down there, and you and I are both big IU uh, fans and supporting Indianapolis, New York City, all all the great cities. You and I uh, have friends, and we are supportive of. So, you know, when, pe when people see this and they see the kind of folks that you work with, uh, who, who, do you, who, who do you help? Uh, what, you know, it's, it's, you know, one of the things that's, that shattered what that is, I found interesting is it's great to talk about all of the, the, uh, the who's who of people that you help, the, the Fortune 500 CEOs or the people that people would recognize their names. But I, I was also uh, surprised to know that you, you also you help people from all walks of life. Uh, yeah. for, you know, tell, tell, us, or tell, tell us what your company does and who do, you, who do you help and how could you maybe help somebody who's watching this? Sure. Well, the majority of what I do is for free. So <laughs> my philosophy is I help everyone. I, every single day, offer my personal help for free. So I do IG Lives. I, three o'clock, it's, it's Monday today in case this is recorded. I, I do IG Live. I've already done it. I have also, and ask me anything at three o'clock. I'm gonna. I do live meetups. So any city I go to, I'll be in Vegas on Wednesday for the grand opening of the Fountain Blue and the NFL meeting interviews at the Win. But I'll also spend hours I have over the last you know ten years or more giving the community a, a, a meetup where they not only meet each other but get my help one on one. What would David do? Who does David know? So the majority of what I do is free in person, online, via uh, social, email, news, whatever it is, the majority of what I do for free. Now, after people get exposed to the help that I give them for free, I even, I'm the only one out there that does this, I think. I send my book. I, I've written eight books. I've sent my book. I pay for shipping and I pay for the book to anyone that wants it. So I do almost everything I can for free. And then when people want more intimate uh, engagement with me, I have a group that meets uh, socially on Mondays vir virtually. And then I'm very selective, but I have 100 one-on-one -on -one clients and business advisory clients. Uh, and those are the people, the business advisory and one-on-one -on -one clients that really fund 
my ability to do so much for free and to do stuff as a group. And I'm very um, creative like you. And with those hundred people, not it's not just the business advisory and coaching, it's the business development that we're involved in seven, eight, and nine figure opportunities together once we're working one-on-one. -on -one, so there could be equity involved, performance involved, all around the world, not just in the United States. And so my model is do everything you can for free to build a community of people from that community, find out who needs more intimate help and specifically provide more value than you're asking for. And as you get to more intimate relationships, I'm able to ask for, let's say, if I asked you for $100 million, I would want to show you and guarantee that, Mark, if we do a $100 million deal together, you're going to receive $200 million from the $100 million that you put in the deal. Now, that's my business objective is always to guarantee and be able to articulate quantitatively the providing of more value that I'm asking for, whether it's $100 to make $200. I need to guarantee that no matter, I'm a profit center for everyone that I meet. Thus, that's why I do so much for free because quantitatively, it's an easy bar to overcome when I will do this for you for free and you'll make more money than you pay for me. <laughs> I, I I just think it's, a, I, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's such a low, uh, it's such a low threshold to success in terms of, that you know, I I find with people, you know, I, I find sometimes when people say like, you know, I've learned that you know that the that the the joy of giving and how that comes back to you, you know, always comes back to you, you know, in multi multiples, is that I think like when people people say they've learned that for me, like I almost think they're screwing with me, like it just seems it's like so intuitive, and and uh, you know as it is to you, like I found my brother from another mother, um, you know, going forward. But I, but I think it's it's amazing to me how it's the it's the it's the mental aspects of life. It's the little bit di the difference between the people that are successful and the people that are failure, the people that are good and the people that are, are unique. Are, are it, it's such a thin line. You know, it's almost like the Olympics. You know, where you you know, a race could be one one hundredth of a second difference between you know you know gold medal and fifth place or something like that, or two one hundredths of a second or something like that. I think it's the same thing in business, and I think people if they would just take a step back and, and 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 think about it and stop worrying about being successful and 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 start thinking about as you say creating more value than anybody else i think that's that's been the secret to to business yeah i think that one of the subtleties of success as well mark is you know it's something that i witnessed last time we were together it's called consistency uh it's although you were participating in a black diamond club event like i was we also were doing so many things outside of the Black Diamond Club event that were consistent behaviors. And I call it the difference between the extra mile and the empty mile. And what I mean by that is that a lot of people with good intentions, they do things on Saturday. They do things that they should do every once in a while. They give every once in a while. They say thank you every once in a while. They volunteer every once in a while. Every once in a while. They'll work on a Saturday 16 hours every once in a while. And then you know what they do with the extra milers? Is they tell you, I now can justify why I'm not where I want to be. I'm justifying why I'm not David Meltzer. I'm justifying why I'm not Mark Murphy because I went the extra mile like they do, but I do it every once in a while. And I use that to justify why I'm not where I am. Where Mark Murphy and David Meltzer, we do it every day. We, we do it every day. We go the extra mile every day. It's not an imbalance in our life. We, we don't spend 16 hours every day. We spend five minutes here, two minutes here, but we are giving every day. We're grateful every day. We're forgiving every day. We're accountable every day. We're getting more productive every day, more accessible every day, more gracious every day. And that to me is the difference between all the extra milers out there and the empty milers like you and I that live at ease, no comparisons or competition, simply within the context of our own skills, knowledge, and desire in an abundant, infinite, unified system of thought that we are focused in on 
what are we doing to interfere with our abundance, not trying to get more or compete for more or trade for more or transact for more. We just have faith that we're going to do more every day and everything that we want will follow us. You, you know, what, one of the, one of the teachers that you remember, you go back to your youth, there was a, it was a teacher I had in, in uh, high school. I had him a couple of times, a guy named Lloyd Jager. And, uh, I, I actually thought I was a little righteous because I thought he was much tougher on me in terms of grading than he was on other students. And, um, you know, I, I finally confronted him at some point and, uh, he, you know, he said to me, well, I'm not grading you against other people. I'm grading you against your potential and you're not working up to your potential. Uh, and yeah, I was trying to probably do the minimum I could. And I was, you know, could get by generally in most classes without doing too much. And it was like a transformational moment for me because it, what it did is it did two things. One is it allowed me to say, hey, I'm not competing against anybody else. I'm competing against being the best person I could be and the best Mark Murphy I can be. So, so, I, so that was number one. But the other thing is, is it freed me to then be the biggest cheerleader for everybody else because I'm not competing against David Meltzer. I'm competing against Mark Murphy. So if I'm the best I can be, if I'm your friend, if I'm good, I hope you're great. <laughs> I hope you have $20. If, 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 you know, and, and so the idea is that it's allowed me to have just that, that alone, that lesson alone has, has been the most freeing of anything I, I, I can remember, you know, from my, from my youth. What a great lesson. And there's two that I derive that resonate with me from that lesson. And one is that our skills and our knowledge are our basement and we need more people in our lives that are helping us with our Delta, with our desire. Uh, and as you know, in sports, uh, and you're looking at one of them, that the closest I came to my potential still today, and I tell people, man, I hope in my speaking career, my coaching career, my business career, that I can have a big as a delta that I had playing college football. Uh, because my basement is really low in football. I, I just, that's how I was born genetically, energetically with my skills and knowledge. But considering where my basement was, I had an amazing delta, an amazing desire. And if I can apply that to the communicative skills or the analytical skills or whatever else I was born genetically and energetically to have a higher basement, uh, imagine if I could apply the same delta to something that I had a higher capacity uh, to do. The other thing is a little bit more interesting as a leader. And I think you, this may resonate with you as a leader, like your teacher was a leader. It's really difficult to bring the best out of people because it hurts their feelings. Not everyone's going to respond to the fairness of, hey, I love you so much. I'm going to bring the best out of you. So I'm going to perturbate you by giving you a B. I I'm, I'm not going to treat you equally because you're not equal. You're not equal. You have a higher basement and, and I need you to live up to your potential. You just can't get by because you were born seven feet four and you can get every rebound when you're 16 years old. I, I need to bring the best out of you in order for me to, to live my life to the fullest by elevating others to elevate myself. And it's a testament to abundance. Look, there's more than enough of everything for everyone. There's more than enough money for everyone. So root them on to get theirs. So they can give more. There's more than enough grades. It, it's not a competition. It, the comparison's a thief of joy. If you take inventory of self and then apply your desire to the inventory that you took, you're going to continue to reach higher and higher and closer and closer to your potential. Yeah, you, know, you, uh, you know, I think, you know, most people that we talk to, one of the things they're often looking to do is grow their business. That's usually probably the number one thing that I think both of us get. But I think, you know, what I've started to realize is that, you know, over the years is you don't really grow a business, you grow people. And, and, and as you said, I mean, so, so it's so apropos that comment was so spot on because if you don't get people to, to reach their potential, you're, you're not, you're not gr growing them. Do you have any advice to, 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 do you have any advice to people that are trying to grow their business in terms of leadership or how to get the best out of people or what they need to do to, to, to take their business to, to its full full potential? Yeah, well, number one, I like to meet people where they're at. And when I do, I use a three-step process when I meet people where they're at. So I'm more interested than interesting with the people that work with me. And so once I know where you're at, I allow you then to shadow, shadow me. 
and learn from me. And when you shadow me, I want two things. One, I want you to learn what I do in certain circumstances and situation. But two, I want you to apply your perspective to what I do by saying, hey, would it help you if? Did you ever try this? And so I'm learning while you're shadowing. And then take to the next step with the people when I know where they're at is to work with them. And once again, learn from and listen for both sides and then supervise. And then when adequate, allow someone to, to shadow them. If you want to scale a business and scale from within and grow your employees, number one, you need to meet them where they're at and then have an interactive experience in shadowing, working with and supervising. And when we take this approach, uh, I believe it's the fastest way to get to 10,000 employees and the easiest and fastest way to get the most productivity, engagement and accessibility for those employees as well uh, in that simple three step process if you meet people where they're at by being more interested than interesting. I, uh, I, I gotta tell you, I ever, you know, we talk all the time and I, I always take furious notes, but uh, you know, what I took away from this about the extra mile versus the empty mile, I think that is, that is just pure, 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 pure gold as all of those things are. I, I, first of all, I wanna thank you for, for taking this time. I know how busy your schedule is. Just tell people between the TV show, between uh, being connected to, to all the stuff you do for free on social media, depending all all the things. How how do people how do people uh, tap into to the Meltzer world? Well, there's two two easiest ways. There's many ways, but the first is email me directly. I answer all of my emails. So David at dmeltzer.com. Put it in the notes, David at dmeltzer.com. And if you're like the majority of the people out there and you don't have a pen right now to write down david at dmeltzer.com or you can't remember david at dmeltzer.com, then remember my name, David Meltzer. Uh, I have lived in the empty mile. So if you Google my name, David Meltzer, there is no excuse not to find me and contact me. I am everywhere. I I'm the middle-aged mutant turtle of the internet, so uh, I'm not going to dance for you or sing from you, but I'm here to be of service for you and for others. Come join our community of people, the Mark Murphys of the world, the people who want to elevate others to elevate themselves, want to build a community of people that help each other and know people that can help each other. That's what Mark Murphy is about. That's what I'm about. Just Google David Meltzer or email david at dmeltzer.com. Well, uh, I will, you know, it's funny, David, I, I call this, I call this, uh, you know, uh, the podcast, the hero of the hour podcast, uh, but the tagline should be, uh, the only podcast you can't understand because I'm the world's worst podcast host. I'm, uh, I'm learning how to do that. I, so I, I always, uh, when I see you on TV or I see you in your uh, podcast, I, I watch a pro at work. So I, my, my, you know, I don't think I'm Joe, I don't think I aspire to be Joe Rogan. I'm just hoping to get, to get the mediocrity by the end of my second season. So uh, <laughs> well, you're doing I, a great I, job and thank you. Thank you for the holiday gift. Uh, I'm using it. So if you hear me clearly, it's from a beautiful <laughs> gift from Mark Murphy. Hey, we appreciate you. Thanks again, David. We'll talk to you soon.